Let's grill up some tacos al pastor. These tacos are without a doubt the most popular and delicious tacos in the world, and there's so much that goes into them. I recently rewatched the Al Pastor episode of the Taco Chronicles, and it got me thinking, and I decided to cook up and share my own version of this iconic recipe in this video, Barney Tech style. And that means over some open fire. There are a few must haves when you're making tacos al pastor. First, you must have a really good adobo recipe. So, this is a detailed marinade recipe and layering process to pack the pork with delicious, authentic, and explosive flavor. So, what the next must have? Well, every taco needs a tasty salsa to be complete. So, in this video, we're all also blending a delicious tomatillo based salsa to pair with our tacos al pastor. This recipe is similar to the salsas that you'll find at your favorite street taco vendors and taquerias. The last must have is a great cooking process. Look, I love some tacos right off the trompa as much as the next foodie, but most of the time I'm just cooking for my small family or a small group of friends. So a whole giant trompo is a bit overkill. So in this video, I'm also going to show you how to make what I call a trompito on some strong super skewers so that you can cook this al pastor recipe either indirectly or over open fire. This will add that delicious char while the fatty pork butt fully renders into an incredible eating experience like no other. So buckle up for another trip to Taco Town and Flavor Nirvana. We're making some awesome tacos al pastor. Vamonos, let's go. Now to make this adobo, we're gonna use 15 guajillo chiles, four ancho chiles, three chiles de arbol, half of a medium white onion, six garlic cloves, two chipotle peppers in adobo, one bay leaf, two tablespoons of wow, two teaspoons of salt, two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar, half a teaspoon of Mexican oregano, two cloves, a quarter cup of crushed pineapple, half a cup of pineapple juice, and two tablespoons of achote. All right, let's get started making the adobo. We're gonna de-seed these guajillo peppers and we're also going to de-seed the ancho peppers. Some people think the veins make them a little bit bitter. I've never really had that experience. This is really the secret to the beautiful red color on the adobo sauce right here. We're going to go ahead and peel the chile ancho too, basically the same process. This is a little sturdier skin, but it's still easy to do by hand. I ain't going to lie, folks. This one, I mean, you smell it. The minute you start to open this up, you can smell it. It smells so good. It's not super traditional to use chile de arbol in the adobo, but I like a little hint of heat, so I'm gonna use three. These you don't really need to seed, but you can if you want to. I'm gonna go ahead and dump my ancho and my guajillo chiles in here, and we're gonna let it come up to a simmer. If you get a seed or two that kinda wants to jump into the pot, it's okay, man. I'm gonna drop my bay leaf in here and let that get soft and add flavor to the water. We're gonna use some of that water in our adobo as well. While that's going on, I'm gonna drop my two cloves in my spice grinder here. Now, this is just a regular coffee grinder, but it is a dedicated coffee grinder for my spices. One and two. Man, it smells so good. I think I'll use four instead. Add the cinnamon stick in there, and I'm gonna grind those two together. My mom has a trick. She likes to put a molcajete there or a plate in here to push everything down into the water. I don't think it's necessary. Mom's not listening to she. <laughs> Mom's not here. It's been 10 minutes. We're gonna go ahead and turn the heat off. I'm gonna let it cool off a little while before we actually hit the blender. You wanna simmer these chiles. 10, 15 minutes should be more than enough. You want it to be nice and soft, just like this. Very floppy, very soft. You don't wanna put all of the chiles flavor in the water. You want some of that to stay with your chile. Into the blender it goes. We're gonna put two half cups in here. One of the things that happened with the achote is that it is like a thickener. Besides being great in flavor, it also thickens the sauce, so that's why we wanna have some extra liquid. This was the whole garlic bulb. A little extra garlic never hurt nobody, and it keeps the vampires away. Now, one of the things that most people do is they cook the onion with the chiles. That's okay, too. We didn't do that today. They're a little stronger, actually, when you put them in raw. We're gonna get two chipotle chiles and put them in here, too. Quarter cup of this crushed pineapple here. We're gonna use half a cup of pineapple juice, half a teaspoon of oregano. And we're gonna add two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar here. You can use white vinegar as well. It works just fine. Now I'm gonna open up the box of achiote here. And this is gonna be, like I said, about two tablespoons. Now I'm gonna cut this into little pieces just to kind of blend a little quicker and easier. All right, my camera crew says that's more than two tablespoons. They're right, I was two little cubes over. I'm gonna put this little extra powder anyway though. I'm gonna go ahead and use two tablespoons of wow. No, what's wow? Wow is just really, really good on pork. That's why we're using that today. Use what you like, it's okay. Ain't no right way, ain't no wrong way. Two teaspoons of APC salt, I mean sea salt. One, two, ha, 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 ha. 
Wait a minute. Sous chef, where's the cinnamon and the cloves? Yes, chef. Andale, así nací, me gusta. So we're gonna pour this in here. God, it smells so good. All right, also, we're not going to strain the adobo, so you wanna blend it for a good two or three minutes. I think it needs just a hair more liquid. I'm gonna take another half a cup of the same liquid that was in the pan, blend that for a couple of minutes again. All right, now I'm gonna take a little spatula and just make sure this stuff up here on top gets pushed all the way down. That way you don't have any pepper flakes. This is an adobo, we don't really need to strain it. And uh, that is the other reason why you want to blend it for a couple of minutes at least. See how it runs, but it's not real runny? That's the way I like my adobos. It could use a little more salt, but uh, I think we got enough in there, so I'm gonna leave it alone. Mm. Oh, that's good. And bring me a beer, please. No, chef. Look at that pretty, pretty, pretty color. Just gorgeous. We have a 12 pound pork butt here. We're gonna slice it in about half inch steaks. We're gonna marinate it in the adobo overnight. Let's get this thing sliced. I have a bone side on this side, so I'm gonna start slicing from this side to get our steaks. I like to mark my pork butt first, and then I'm gonna go all the way down. This end one is probably gonna be a little bit thicker. And like Garney Tex always says, make sure the meat's very cold. A cold meat is much easier to work with than room temperature meat. Pork butt to me is an amazing piece of meat. It has about 13 different muscles and it's used in so many different recipes. I mean, you can make asado de puerco, you can make smoked pork for pulled pork, pork steaks like we're doing here today, cabbage and pork, super good. Fantastic, and the list goes on and on. I'm gonna name my video The Incredible Edible Pork Butt, and we're gonna do that real soon. And my all-time favorite, carnitas. We've got that video coming up soon, too. Make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you hit the subscribe button so you won't miss the carnitas and the incredible edible pork butt. And is that a pretty pork butt or what? That is gorgeous, look at that, beautiful. Love it, love it, love it. I'm gonna go ahead and debone this because I can't cut any more steaks out of that. Make sure you put this on super high speed, Sophie. It'll look better, I promise. Perfect. I'm just gonna trim this very top fat cap on these and I'm gonna leave that little strip of meat. That is super, super delicious. This is the end where we started to slice the pork butt, mostly fat. This will make some good carnitas. We're gonna go ahead and drop these in the adobo. I'm gonna put a little bit of this on the bottom. Spread it around a little bit. We're gonna lay the first steak down here. Now I'm gonna put a little bit more on top here. Put it around with a spoon. Lay another steak here next to that. Spread that around. We're gonna get some more pork butts in here. All right, friends, we have all of our pork steaks in here. I have a little bit of uh, adobo left over, so I'm just gonna pour it all in there. It's all beautifully covered up. And it's time for this to take a nap in the refrigerator, but it's not time for my nap. We're gonna drink a couple of cold brews, and then we're gonna take a nap. Tomorrow morning, we're gonna fire up the RPG grill, and we're gonna make you guys some amazing tacos al pastor. Now, all street tacos need a garnish, especially tacos al pastor. They gotta have a little bit of onion and cilantro. Let's start with the cilantro first. Bam! Now, the trick to dicing the onions, all done. Now for the al pastor tacos, we're gonna make a salsa. We're gonna use half of a medium white onion. We're gonna use seven small tomatillos, a bunch of cilantro, two serranos, two jalapenos, two chile de arbol, and two teaspoons of OG. Now all these ingredients are pretty traditional in a tomatillo salsa. Mm -hmm. You never know if those serranos and jalapenos are gonna be really hot or if they're mild. Today they're hot, hot, hot. Whoa, 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 whoa and it's time to get our adobo marinated pork onto the skewers. This is called a super skewer. As far as how long it needs to marinate, you need at least four to six hours minimum, I think. Remember, it has a little bit of pineapple in there and a little bit of apple cider vinegar. Both of those act as tenderizers, so it really softens up the meat. It also helps the meat cook a little quicker, in my opinion. All right, we're gonna take our skewer and we're gonna start with a few at a time, like this. And be very careful, these skewers are very, very sharp. Double skewers like this are a little bit trickier to work than a single one, just because they tend to want to uh, expand or close up on you, so you want to make sure you try to keep them nice and straight. 
I'm folding up some of these steaks, the bigger ones a little bit more than the small ones. These uh, pork butts are a lot of different muscles, so the fat in between makes it a little bit more challenging, but we're getting there. All right, now one of the things I'm gonna do, because the pork butt, like, like I said, has so many different muscles, it may wanna try to fall apart on us out there. So I'm going to add an extra skewer on each side. All right, now this kind of a cook is not a hot and fast cook. It is a sort of a slow to medium cook. So I'm gonna light this, this charcoal here, then I'm gonna spread it out a little bit. I'm gonna add a couple of chunks of wood for extra flavor, but it'll be more or less indirect with a very, very little bit direct on the bottom. All right, friends, it's time to get our skewered pork onto our little javelin grill here. And this was designed to go just like that. I think I need to push the pork a little further back. Right there's good. All right, now we have our little trompito right over the heat here. Oof, it's plenty hot three ways here. So we have indirect heat on both sides and a little bit of heat underneath. This should work out really, really good. For, we're gonna kind of eyeball it for the first 20 minutes and see if uh, we start to get a little bit of color and a little bit of char. If it's too hot, we're gonna scoot the fire a little further to the side. If it's not hot enough, we're gonna add a little bit more coals underneath. And when it starts to get some nice color, we're gonna go ahead and flippity flip it to the other side and just keep an eye on it, really. All right, friends, it's been a pretty solid 25 minutes. Getting a little bit of color underneath and very carefully, very gently, we're gonna flip this over. There we go. Ooh, yeah, look at that. We're getting some nice little char right there. So we got plenty of heat, even though I hardly have any charcoal down there, I've got plenty of heat. Based on what I see here, I'm only gonna give it about 15 minutes before I come back and flip it back the other way. But I think with enough indirect heat, we'll be fine on the sides. But mainly at the bottom, we're getting, it's plenty hot right here on both sides. As the juices drip, you can smell that adobo you know, that, that's on the meat. You can smell the pork. Just really a great aroma that we have going on right now. It really is. Got to figure out a little uh, ingenuity here to keep this thing from rotating. I got a little extra weight on one side, so it's not quite even. So you see how he wants to rotate? So it's trying to stay like that. So I've got my vice grips here. I'm going to get it nice and even here. Boom. Uh, one of the things that happens sometimes when you're doing open fire cooking like this, you start to run out of fire really fast. So I'm gonna add a little bit of charcoal on both sides. Not too much, just enough to keep it going. It's been 15 minutes and uh, because we wanted to cook nice and slow in order to get that meat nice and tender, but it's a big piece of meat, so we gotta give it time. We gotta give it plenty of time. So what I've done right now, I've also scooted my fire on both sides a little further away and I scooted some of the fire that was down there in the bottom to the end, one to the front, one to the back a little bit. So I have a little less heat now, but it's still plenty hot, very, very hot. We'll be back in another 15 minutes. It's coming along really nice. I think I had a little too much heat at the beginning, so I moved the fire to the sides and I have very, very little heat on the bottom now. I think that's gonna work out really great. All right, my friends, pineapple is very integral to tacos al pastor. It's gonna be right over the heat there. Hopefully the pineapple drips some of its natural juices right onto all this delicious looking pork. That should be good, really good. All right, friends, our fire has settled down a little bit. We're gonna add a little bit more heat in a little while. And I keep seeing this piece of meat here and it, and it just keeps staring me in the face. So I'm gonna cut it off and give it a little taste test. Fully cooked. Oh man, that is super, super delicious. Man, I'm looking forward to these tacos. I'm gonna give this one more flippity flip right now. There we go. You can see we're just getting a little char, just really nice. We're looking great. That tasted heavenly. Oh, I can't wait till it's done done. Our friends, our trompo has been on for three hours and a half. We temped the exterior. We're sitting at 170 most of the way on the exterior. So we're gonna go ahead and pull it out. The aroma is fantastic. It's been dripping and I've just been salivating with that smell, with the aroma of the pork. And I can smell the adobo kind of just coming through in little whiffs. It's just really, really incredible. My mouth is watering just talking right now. Before I take it off of the uh, grill here and start shaving it, I'm gonna shave some pineapple here. We're gonna get it on the grill to give it that little extra flavor. That's gonna be delicious. Check that out, friend. All right, so we're gonna pull the trompito off and we're gonna shave it. We're gonna make us some tacos. All right, we're gonna shave some of this off right here. Just the little exterior pieces, which 
we know are done. Look at that, doesn't that look gorgeous? Look how perfectly cooked that is. Looks gorgeous. It's gonna be great. Look at that, just perfect. All right, I'm gonna put it right here to keep it warm. Let's go make our tacos. This is looking so pretty. Smells so good. Mmm, man, juicy. That little charge is like, whoa, man, it's really, really good. This is delicious. Bottom line, this is super delicious. I'm excited. Let's dice up our pineapple while we're waiting for the tortillas to get warmed up. Gonna cut them nice and thin. I'm just gonna leave them long like that and lay them into the taco. Y'all know me, I like to stuff my tacos big. Get a nice, big, fat taco. Let's get a little bit of pineapple on here. Can't forget a little bit of onion. Lots of cilantro. I love cilantro. So we're gonna put a lot of this delicious tomatillo salsa. It goes really good with the pork. All right, let's take a big old bite and see what it's like. Mmm. Ooh. Mmm. That is delicious. I'm gonna eat the whole thing before I talk anymore. Mmm. Wow. That was a seriously delicious taco al pastor. Honestly, I mean, this is the first time I do one of these. It's way better than I thought it was gonna be. I mean, the whole pork, the adobo flavor is like really good. And then when you bite the pineapple with it, you know, it's like the sweet and the adobo flavor, and then the cilantro and a little crunch of onion in there too. It's just all together, it's like a party in your mouth. It's just like really awesome. Then you guys know I always love all my food, but this, this is special. This, I'm super, super happy with the way this turned out. I mean, I made that adobo, I made that recipe, you know, based on my own research, and it just really honestly exceeded my expectations. I think it's fantastic. Highly recommend you guys try this one for sure. All right, friends, let's make us a delicious taco al pastor. A little bit of pineapple. Check that out. Ooh, look at that. Gotta have a little bit of lime on here. Mmm. -hmm. I can definitely see why Tacos al Pastor are so incredibly popular. It's an incredible combination of deliciousness. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, friends, I'm gonna show you guys how to make a gringa taco. The legend has it that this divorced man left the USA, went into Mexico, and then he invented this taco because it made him feel better. <laughs> this is a bunch of mozzarella cheese. Uh, you can use Oaxaca cheese or use whatever cheese you want. So let's get some of this uh, al pastor meat, put it in here in the taco. This is gonna be super good. I'm gonna put a little cilantro, a little bit of onions. I'm gonna put a little salsa, fold this over. Just like that. All right, now we're just gonna let that tortilla finish cooking and we'll be back. All right, friends, this thing's done. It's looking friggin' gorgeous. Look at that. Beautiful. Woo wee. Look at that, baby. That is nice. All right, hon, it's been a long, hot day. I think I deserve a beer now. Actually, I think I deserve my third beer. <laughs> Our gringa taco here has cooled off a little bit. I'm gonna cut it in three so I can share it with my family. I'll be quite frank with y'all. I've never even heard of Las Gringas Tacos until my son shared that with me. I'm gonna get this middle part because it's the biggest. <laughs> Sneaky. Gotta have that squeeze of lime. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. Great idea, Dan. Oh, it's delicious. Wow. I love that crunchy flour tortilla on the outside. Now some cooks make these with pineapple inside. People pushing the boundaries of flavor are even using chamoy inside. I will do more salsa. A lot of it. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, my barbecue and foodie, oh, wait a minute. Oh. All right, my barbecue and foodie loving friends, it's been a long, hot day. We've really enjoyed making this Tacos al Pastor video for you guys. I hope you guys enjoy it. That adobo is spot on, 100% delicious. I hope you guys try it, man. I highly recommend you give it a try. What tacos would you guys like to see next? Put it in the comments below and let me know. If you guys are interested in American Pitmaster Rubs, go to pitmaster.us. If you wanna up your barbecue game, go to pitmasterclass.us and I'll see you there. Boom, 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 boom. What's up, my barbecue loving friends? Here, Larnie. <laughs> I'm a much better cook than a butcher, so don't make fun of my butchering skills, okay? <laughs> follow the bone, follow the bone. What's cooking? I don't know, what are you gonna cook? Grandma's not cooking today. <laughs> I might save a couple of these steaks for Scooby Snacks. <laughs> Who was that cartoon character that used to do? One, two. That was Dracula, right? The Dracula character. 
Sesame Street. Sesame Street, yeah. One, two. Oh, 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 oh. Buddy. 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 Hmm. Where's my chips and beer? Yes, Chuck. <laughs> Honey. Yes. When's Christmas? Is, uh, did we already pass Father's Day? Yeah. <laughs> I think I want a trompo. All right.